Hello, I'm Dr. Anna Dale, and I teach philosophy at Mount St. Mary's University in Emmitsburg, Maryland. The memory palace technique originated in the ancient world as the method of loci, or locations. It was invented by the 5th century BC poet Simonides, and recently popularized in an episode of the TV show Sherlock. It works because your mind is naturally oriented toward knowing through your senses. So you're going to piggyback on that natural tendency by associating what you want to remember with your sensible memories of familiar locations. In this video, I will describe the technique and show how it is used. The memory palace technique works in five steps. Step one, select 12 locations from a familiar environment. Ideally, you should use your house or apartment or someplace where you are every day. Choose just one to three locations per room and feel free to skip locations. You don't have to cover everything. Choose things that will not change their position easily. So not movable furniture or a picture that on a wall that might get rehung in the future. Step two, come up with a fixed sequence, a route that you could walk that will pass each location in turn. The route must be invariant and it must not cross itself or double back. Start with, make the starting point of your path either getting home from work or getting out of bed in the morning or some other familiar event. Step three, imagine this route repeatedly until you know the sequence well. Visualize yourself walking through your home, looking at or touching each of the locations. Think of whether you look left or right, up or down as you approach the location and think of the sounds and smells, etc., that you associate with each place. For example, the smell of shampoo or the warmth of hot water in the sink. These are the specific details that will be important for triggering your memory. You are creating memory slots where you will file things that you intend to memorize and triggers that will activate your memory when you want to call something up out of the slot. Step four. List the things that you want to memorize in order and match them up with your 12 slots. If there are more than 12, start over again at slot one or expand your list of locations or build a second memory palace in a new location, uh, perhaps your workplace. 12 slots seems to me to be enough for most memorization tasks. Step five, imagine some unusual or outrageous connection between the location and the thing that's assigned to its slot. The more striking, the better. Imagine things that are much larger or much smaller than usual, or put them into bizarre situations that never actually occur in real life. You want to be very specific and detailed, really let your creativity go at this step, because you should not just put the things in the slot and trust yourself to remember them. You want to imagine specific sensible qualities details of sight and sound, of smells or feelings that you have about the thing. These are the sensible qualities that are your memory triggers. They are absolutely necessary for this process to work effectively. You want to draw on your personal memory and on pop culture references that you are familiar with. Choose things that you will instantly recognize. For some associations, you can play on the sound of the word for what you're trying to remember as well as its meaning. I'll give examples of all these things in my uh, application coming up. So here are the 12 places in my home that I've chosen. Yours, of course, will be different. I come in my kitchen door. I look down and to the left and see my keys rack where I hang my keys. I take a few steps forward and I look down and to the right and see the kitchen sink. I turn left and walk a few steps and I pass the upright freezer. Then I go into the next room Ahead of me is the sofa, and on my left, a little bit down, is the TV. Then I turn right and go into the hallway, where there's a bookshelf. I go up the stairs, and at the top of the, the stairs, the first thing I see is a laundry basket. I turn left, and as I'm walking on my left, I see my office with my office chair, and then the bathroom door. I go into my bedroom, and I see my bed, and then through my bedroom onto the back porch. 
Now I'll use my system to memorize something that I want to remember but do not currently know. In the Catholic Mass, sometimes the priest says the first Eucharistic prayer, which contains a long list of saints, and it ends with these twelve. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas, and Damian. I want to memorize this list in order, so I'm going to place it in my memory palace. The first slot is the keys rack, and here I want to remember the name Linus. So I think of Linus from Peanuts, and he's always carrying around his blue blanket and sucking his thumb, so I imagine Linus's blanket hanging on the hook of my keys rack. My second slot is the sink, uh, and the name is Cletus. I remember Cletus, the slack-jawed yokel from The Simpsons, so I imagine him at my sink washing the dishes, chuckling to himself. That's very memorable for me. The third location is the freezer. Here, I imagine that the door is off my freezer, and my teenage son is sitting in the freezer, and he's shivering, his teeth are chattering, and he says sarcastically, gosh, Dad, it sure is clement in here. So teenage sarcasm is something I live with on a daily basis, and so that's a good memory trigger for me, for the name clement. Fourth location, the sofa, and the name is Sixtus. So I imagine six gigantic elephant tusks sitting on my sofa. They're gigantic. They're weighing it down. In fact, the springs are bending, and I'm worried that the sofa is going to break. Six tusks. That'll work for me. Fifth location is the television. Uh, the name is Cornelius. That's easy. The TV is showing the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer cartoon, and I think of Yukon Cornelius in constant loop. Okay, so Cornelius on the TV. The sixth location is the bookshelf, and the name is Cyprian. So I imagine my friend Anne is standing at the bookshelf, and she has a cup of tea on a saucer, and she says to me, you want a sip? She offers me a sip of tea. My mnemonic for this slot is sip with Anne, Cyprian. Uh, slot seven is the stairs to the upstairs. The name is Lawrence, and I imagine that the stairs are piled high with D.H. Lawrence novels, which Anne obviously took off of the bookshelf when she got here, uh, and I have to climb over them to get upstairs. Uh, now, I really don't like D.H. Lawrence's fiction, so this is a good memory trigger for me, the idea that I have dozens and dozens of D.H. Lawrence novels in my house. So uh, that's uh, slot seven, my, my mnemonic for Lawrence. And number eight is the laundry basket at the top of the stairs, and the name here is Chrysogonus. This is tough because that's an unusual name. What I imagine here is uh, a little tiny anti-gun activist, gun control activist, waving a placard and demonstrating, marching around in a circle, and she's crying, gun nuts, gun nuts. So cry gun nuts is my mnemonic for uh, Chrysogonus and the laundry basket. Okay, the laundry basket's turned upside down over her. Ninth is the office chair, and the name is John. That's easy. John Lennon is sitting in my office chair playing his guitar. Uh, number 10 is the bathroom, uh, and the name is Paul. That's also easy. Paul McCartney is in the shower, singing in the shower, accompaniment to John Lennon's guitar. Number 11, the bed. The name is Cosmos that I want to memorize here. Well, Cosmos sounds like Cosmos, and who's the host of Cosmos? It's Neil deGrasse Tyson. So I imagine Neil deGrasse Tyson asleep in my bed, and maybe to remind me that the name is not Cosmos, but Cosmos with an A, he's wearing a stocking cap that has an A embroidered on it. So Neil deGrasse Tyson, asleep in my bed, wearing a stocking cap with an A on it, that'll help me remember the name Cosmos. And then on the back porch, the name I want to remember for this slot is Damien. So I think of the evil kid from the Omen movies. He's waiting on the back porch, glowering at me, ready to throw me off the porch and kill me. So those are my memory slots. So my memory triggers are Linus's blanket, Cletus from The Simpsons, teen sarcasm on the word Clement, six tusks, Yukon Cornelius, Sip with Anne, D.H. Lawrence novels, Cry Gun Nuts, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, Neil deGrasse Tyson with wearing a cap with an A on it, and The Evil Kid from The Omen. Now I just practice by visualizing a walk through my memory palace past all 12 locations from my keys rack to the back porch. Practicing twice a day or more often, you should see results very quickly. Write down your associations at first if you need to. 
With each mental trip through the sequence, you're strengthening your knowledge of the slots, and this makes it easier for you to remember things that you want to insert into the slots later. Two final points. No one can do this for you. you no one can prepare your memory palace. It's individualized uh, to your mind. And no one can give you the detailed associations that will trigger your memory. You have to do these things for yourself. Thankfully, it gets easier with time. And finally, once you're using the technique, the only difference between you and the Sherlock villain is practice to expand the number of slots and the speed with which you can recall things out of them. So that's my introduction to the Memory Palace with an example. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.